Why do software developers and hardware companies spoil us with new revolutionary technologies every year while the technical state of video games not only doesn't improve but sometimes even deteriorates? Why do games that are more than 10 years old often look much better than modern projects packed with the latest technologies? And why is it that the more graphics degrade, the more powerful a computer is needed? First of all, let me say that technology is very important. Technology matters. Technology is always good. Objectively speaking, without it, you would not use top-end equipment equipment, play your favorite games, watch this video, or any other. Even ray tracing, which often gets its fair share of criticism, is a genuinely cool feature. So if technology is great, what's the real problem here? From here on, it's all about the real shit. Here's the truth. Advanced graphical tech doesn't guarantee a game will look good. The beauty of visually stunning games isn't just down to programmers. For something like Far Cry 5 to look photorealistic, the credit primarily goes to the 2D and 3D artists, modelers, and designers. Only after that do the programmers come into play, writing shaders and making everything run. And here's the kicker. Far Cry 5 isn't a technological marvel. High res textures, long draw distances, global illumination, and bump mapping aren't revolutionary. Developers have been using all this tech for years now, but Far Cry 5 doesn't have advanced hair rendering and physics like in Tomb Raider or The Witcher 3. No real-time reflections, no nanite, the stuff devs have been flexing with lately, and not even ray tracing. Basically, Far Cry 5 feels like a technically outdated game. But then how is it that Far Cry 5, for all its technical backwardness, is a very good game not only visually, but also in terms of resource requirements? Why do modern games run worse, and if they look better, they are only slightly slightly better. In the old days, we always felt a significant jump in graphics when a new generation of consoles came out, which was obvious and massive. And now, when we have these dozens of teraflops on consoles and powerful RTX graphic cards for thousands of dollars, we play games that are not much different in graphics than projects that were released 7 or even 8 years ago. And sometimes, these powerful devices for thousands of dollars do not even allow us to play at a stable 60 frames per second. But what exactly prevents technology and powerful hardware from giving us truly breakthrough graphics and good optimization. It's all about coherent and uniform design. What the fuck is that? That's a good question. In fact, graphics in a game can be called coherent and uniform when all or most of the graphic elements are designed at the same level. When you look at the picture as a whole, the eye does not cling to anything. And the interesting thing is that a coherent and uniform graphic can be primitive and non-technological. Moreover, integrity and uniformity apply not only to graphics and not only to games. Let me give you some interesting examples. Let's take fine arts. It's clear that there are different types of drawing and there are many different genres and artistic styles. For example, there's a painting by Emmanuel Lutz, Washington Crossing the Delaware. And this is Marilyn Diptych by Andy Warhol. Since these are different areas of fine art, it is very stupid to compare them with each other. However, we can say for sure that individually, they are complete and uniform paintings in their own style that attract attention give aesthetic pleasure, and, most importantly, are pleasant to look at in their own way. After all, nothing is out of the general style. Now, imagine a situation where a picture of George Washington is a Star Wars aerial battle, people are holding a McDonald's flag, the water is acid pink, and the memes Mike Wazowski is standing on the left. Yes, it looks fucking awesome. But still, it doesn't look like a monolithic and coherent work. And not only because Wazowski and Star Wars starships have nothing to do with it, but because the drawing style of the individual elements is different and jarring. After all, a pile of elements with different drawing styles does not help normal perception. Another good example is movies. It's no secret that special effects can either create a wow effect or completely kill the magic of a movie. The first Terminator is a great example. The problem with the movie was the low budget, and Cameron and the team had to do some tricks to shoot the special effects scenes. That's why the T-800 looks so unnatural in some scenes. However, there were several such scenes throughout the movie. Therefore, knowing what tricks the crew went to because of the low budget, all this can be forgiven. And it works the same way in video games. Here are two rather unexpected examples, namely GTA San Andreas and Minecraft. It's clear that Minecraft was not so much backward in terms of graphics for its time. 
The game was generally perceived as a graphic gag because at first glance it looked like something from the last century. Although it was released in the same year as Battlefield 3, Batman Arkham City, and Crisis 2 which were breakthroughs in terms of graphics. In 2011, Minecraft was very backward in terms of graphics and was only on par with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. However, unlike many games, Minecraft is a great example of a coherent and uniform design. Everything ingenuous is simple. No budget for fancy graphics? Let's make it primitive in everything. The result was an amazing cubic world in which all textures were pixelated and geometry and animations were primitive. But this primitivism extends to everything you see in front of your eyes. You can feel differently about Minecraft, but in terms of graphical integrity and uniformity, it's a brilliant project. It's a pity that many players have not appreciated this genius and are adding mods with ray tracing and various texture packs, but shaders that make the water transparent and are very realistic won't make the land and sand on the coast look as realistic. So graphical mods are a surefire way to spoil your perception of graphics in Minecraft. The situation with GTA San Andreas is much the same. The game was released in the legendary year of 2004, and given the graphics revolutionary games that were burning up video cards at the time, San Andreas looked like a little brother with a developmental delay. But no matter how disgusting the graphics were in GTA San Andreas, they were disgusting in everything. It is for this reason that this game did not cause visual discomfort at the time, and for some people even now. You could hardly see a cutscene where a detailed CJ is holding an object worse in detail than himself. Poorly detailed characters, with crooked animations, walked through a soapbox with low detailed furniture, and held something that somehow resembled certain objects. And that's why the remastered Grand Theft Auto, the definitive edition, looks so fucking bad. The developers of this shit, who are not actually connected with Rockstar Games, obviously forgot about the same integrity and uniformity. And for some reason, they decided to improve not all textures, but only a part of them. And instead of improving the detail of everything, they focused on the lighting and puddles on the asphalt. Imagine what tasty screenshots they could make to advertise this remaster. As a result, we have this shameful crap, an uneven plasticine mess with gorgeous headlight shadows and disgusting models. So now we know that graphics technology alone is not enough to make a game's graphics good. But when all aspects are worked out at the same level, even if this level is not very high, you can achieve a good result even without technology. And when art designers, programmers, and engineers start working together, working hard on every graphic component and skillfully using the coolest technologies, we get incredible graphic breakthroughs, which unfortunately are very, very few. However, back in the days when some of you were still in your dad's balls, almost all games looked great. When developers were driven by a desire to create something good and authentic, where everything fit together perfectly. Perhaps that's why the first Call of Duty, Quake, Hitman, and many great old games have remained in our memory as having incredibly good visuals. Although in fact, nowadays their graphics look very backward, somewhere around the same level as modern games from Ubisoft. But the real graphical peak happened in 2004. It was then that three games were released that completely changed the way gamers thought about graphics in games. Doom 3, Far Cry, and of course, Half-Life 2. All these games were technological and breakthrough projects of their time. Lighting, models, physics, geometry, texturing. 2004 was indeed a revolutionary year for the gaming industry. There's just one small nuance. It was the year that marked the beginning of developers' wrong priorities in making graphics in games. And the reason for this is the first Far Cry. Despite all the gorgeous open spaces, beautiful shaders, and good physics, Far Cry was not coherent and uniform. Here and there, there were undetailed textures, and the character models were pretty bad. But the problem was that at that time, most players evaluated the graphics not in the game itself, but by the beautiful screenshots on the back of the disc box. It was then that the developers realized that what matters to the average player is not the uniform elaboration of graphic elements, but rather certain aspects that are simply well seasoned with color correction and bright design. And here we go straight to 2007 and 8. It was at this time that the most breakthrough and voracious game projects were released that simply mocked the consoles and computers of the time. It was the second graphical peak in the history of video games when Crisis and GTA 4 were released. The first Crisis is still a joke about beautiful technological graphics that few people can afford. Crytek crammed a shitload of different technologies into their game, and even though the game had some graphical flaws, the result is still a project that looks very decent even 17 years later. Crisis is a great example of how technology is good, 
but you also need to be able to work with it competently. Even though the system requirements were way too high for the time, Crisis blew minds with its graphics and worked fine. Rockstar with its GTA 4 screwed up a bit. And how painful it is to admit this, given that the fourth installment is perhaps the best part of the series in many ways. At the time of its release, GTA 4 had gorgeous lighting and shadows, and the world was filled with objects that were pleasing to the eye. However, the textures and character models turned out to be one of the game's two major problems. And the other problem was, of course, the lousy optimization which some people still can't get over. GTA 4 is a good example where the developers implemented half of the technologies well, but just gave up on the other half and it turned out to be a shitty situation. And then, everything continued to get worse in the gaming industry. From about 2009 to 2013, in the last years of the Xbox 360 and PS3 lifecycle, games were released that were not significantly better in terms of comprehensive improvements of graphical parameters, but almost every game paid most attention to shaders all kinds of colorful and grainy filters, and other cheap picture decorations. And the developers can be understood because the console market brings in more money, which means that the graphics need to be adjusted to console standards. Besides, as I said before, most gamers don't give a shit about coherence and uniformity because it's much easier to attract attention with beautiful screenshots and rendered cinematic trailers. There were some stagnation, and this stagnation was also accompanied by an increase in system requirements, and then really powerful computers began to appear that could run Battlefield 3 and Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. And I'm already prepared for a lot of dislikes and hate in the comments, but I'll still say that Modern Warfare 3 was much more beautiful than the third Battlefield. For all its hardware and technological demands, Battlefield 3 was never graphically coherent and uniform. For good textures and lighting, the developers had to pay with reduced detail of locations, which was very striking. And of course, Battlefield was much more demanding than Call of Duty. But Modern Warfare 3 may not have been as cool as its competitor in terms of new technologies, but the developers did everything right. They left the development of graphic elements at an average level, but in everything else. The result was a nice looking game with adequate requirements that didn't hurt the players' eyes. And now let's talk about the good stuff. And this good, oddly enough, is related to the previous generation of consoles. I really believe that the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 were the times when perhaps the most beautiful games were released. And in confirmation of my words, we can see how many remasters were still being made of games from the last generation, especially without changing anything. And why? If a conventional Uncharted 4 released 8 years ago or Witcher 3 released 9 years ago, look on par with modern games and sometimes even better. It was in the period from 2014 to 2016 that a lot of really beautiful and moderately even projects were released. Perhaps due to the new generation of consoles, developers were able to untie their hands and try to do their best, but in 2018 and 2019, something changed. It's a crossroads in the game industry in terms of graphics. I both love and hate this period for a simple reason. It was during these years that we got the technology of ray tracing in games and some really cool projects in terms of graphics. However, the rest of the games not only remained at the same level, but also began to degrade in terms of graphics. It was the beginning of the end. Yes, we got RDR2, God of War, and Death Stranding, which stood out graphically from other projects. They were beautiful and revolutionary, and interestingly, these games were originally console exclusives. Although, it is traditionally believed that consoles are the main problem in the development of graphic technologies in the gaming industry. This is far from the case. The main problem of graphics degradation is... Yes, as paradoxical as it may sound, the most powerful platform on which we can play with the new best graphics is the very problem that has caused games to stop developing technologically. And before PC gamers turn this video off, and they never know that I think PC gamers are lovely and nice people, I'll try to get my point across. Game developers, especially large studios that can churn out the same projects every year, actively and closely cooperate with video card manufacturers. And it is logical to assume that the creators of most popular franchises, which always sell well, see no reason to make graphics better, but they need to sell new powerful hardware. That's why it turns out that now the graphics are usually improved where it's not particularly noticeable. For example, they add extra polygons, and now your 4060 video card is a piece of crap that can't even give you 60 FPS in new games. So of course you need a new RTX 5090 for $2000. That's why right now we see such a big jump in system requirements even though graphics are not progressing much. Just 10 years ago, 1GB of video memory was enough to play really beautiful games. 
Now, you need at least six gigabytes to play the lame Star Wars Outlaws. Are you fucking kidding me? And strangely enough, consoles are not to blame for the degradation of graphics. We have plenty of examples of games on consoles that may not have been technologically revolutionary, but they were uniformly worked out at an average or even high level and did not cut the eye. But in any case, maybe over time, developers will finally realize that with all the resources they have, they can create a really beautiful game.